OK, let me take you through this calculation. It's the calculation for determining, uh, to, to determine the uh, excavator arm geometry on the back of a backhoe loader. Uh, we can see here that we have a boom, a boom ram, which controls the rotation of the boom. Then we have a dipper with its dipper ram, controlling the position of the dipper arm. And we have a bucket and a bucket ram. Uh, we can see that the whole uh, excavator arm is uh, a simple uh, pinned uh, jointed uh, assembly. Uh, each of the pin positions have been given a name so that we can uh, easily identify uh, what we're talking about. And we use a name convention uh, for the calculation, quite a simple name convention. X designates the X coordinate, Y, Y coordinate. The distance between two points is uh, given uh, the parameter S, so SAB is the distance between uh, points A and point B. Uh, we also can give angles using, uh, or we can calculate angles, and we give those the name uh, theta, uh, and theta ABC is the angle between the points A, B, and C. Uh, we have we know the masses of the boom dipper and bucket and we know the hydraulic pressure and we know the areas of uh, each of the rams so we can do some loading assessments as well now the calculations themselves are actually relatively simple we uh, we need to set the extension of the uh, uh, of each of the rams and then we determine the, the geometry. And we determine the geometry by use of simple uh, trigonometry really. And we, we use extensively uh, the cosine rule to calculate angles and we can see that uh, cosine rule uh, turning up time and time again to help us solve this geometry. Uh, we use uh, the cosine rule where we know uh, three lengths of a triangle and we want to calculate the uh, one of the uh, angles. Uh, once we have an angle then we can calculate the actual position of the, each of the points. So we can see that same form being used time and time again for points C, D, E. Again the same form of uh, the cosine rule there being used to solve the geometry. Uh, we solve all the points uh, and uh, we even solve the uh, points for the center of gravity positions so that's point M, N and O uh, for the uh, the that's the boom center of gravity uh, and this is the center of gravity of the dipper and the bucket and what we produce once we've uh, solved all, all the x and y coordinates of every single point is we produce we can plot that then as a chart using a simple excel chart so here we can see uh, it's a very crude skeletal representation but we can make out uh, this is the boom and this little line here shows the position of the center of gravity the same for the dipper and the same for the bucket there now let's just see what happens when we play around with this calculation so I'm going to run back up to the top of the uh, chart and let's rotate the uh, let's rotate the boom round 50 percent and we'll take a look at the chart to see what happens Okay, uh, as you might expect, the the chart is updated with a new geometry, and we can see that the boom has rotated round to uh, the horizontal position there. Uh, and clearly, we can we could also go back to play around with um, other parameters like the dipper. Let's put that to 50%, and we'll take another look, see what's happened now. Okay. Uh, pretty much what you might expect. But there are some calculations uh, that we do apart from geometry and one of the calculations that we have a look at is we look at the uh, boom lift capacity. And the boom uh, represented by this uh, triangle here uh, is controlled by the ram between points B and C and uh, we can calculate the perpendicular distance here between the line of action of the ram and the uh, rotation point which is A and using simple moments we can calculate the load uh, that's acting uh, through the ram. Uh, we can do the same thing for dipper lift capacity for any geometrical configuration uh, although some of the uh, formulas here can get quite long we use the uh, XLC um, uh, XLC add-in so that we can uh, easily read the equations and we can easily check them too. Um, 
looking further down we can also calculate uh, bucket breakout loads Let me just go back up uh, we'll just see there uh, this is how we can calculate a, a bucket breakout load and so this is the, um, the the load that we get at the bucket tooth K uh, for uh, a given uh, a RAM load uh, so for any any geometry whatsoever all these parameters are, are available uh, so we can learn an awful lot uh, about our excavator arm just from this simple uh, uh, simple uh, geometry and uh, force balance uh, approach uh, when we look at the uh, excavator arm now what we'll what we'll do with the results of these is we'll uh, go on and, and, and do more detailed calculations but in terms of a systems analysis of an excavator arm this does a pretty good job and using all the uh, Excel uh, the, the Excel uh, goal seek operations we will come to find that this will be uh, a very useful tool for us to use when we're uh, designing our excavator arms okay thanks for listening